Okay, we're looking at our study of the Bible, continuing our study. Today we're looking at what is the real we yeah. Okay, that's a good way to start off. What is the re reliability of the Bible? If my tongue will come back. It communicates with accuracy of its statements. And we, we last time we looked at you know the character of our study. And we saw in our study, looking back, look at that accuracy and authority. And the Bible communicates with accuracy its statements. They're true. It can hold up in any law court. It will hold up in all eternity because the Bible says that Jesus said, who is the word, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. We're not going to have soda pop in heaven. We're not going to have automobiles in heaven. But we will have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in heaven. So are they reliable? Are they genuine? The Bible says they are. Well, who does the Bible think it is? It was written by men. A book in the words of the voice of God on at least 48 prophecies of Jesus Christ in his first coming, his first advent, fulfilled 100%. And the accuracy of the children of Israel, their history, their today, and their tomorrow. In their attacks on the Bible, they are dreadful of internal testimony. Then we have to polish on the external evidence the accuracy of the Bible. Would you like to recognize what the external evidence are to the accuracy of the Bible? And their answer is no. They don't want to know. The Bible's incorrect. The Bible's written by man. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. You're not going to find any prophecy, any accuracy in any textbook, both past, present, and future, in any school, college, or university, like you'll find in the Bible. There is no book in the whole world that can put, that can put a position, the examination that the Bible can, on the external evidence. All the writings of evolution are assumptions. All the writtenness of the philosophers are what they think and what they believe. There are writers and authors of books used in schools today while they tripped out on drugs and alcohol and their lives were ruined and they had no peace. Like the peace of God. The actual testimony of the Bible itself is pure. And what is pure has not been touched by man or animal. It is telling you, this is totally reliable, what the Bible speaks. No other books does that. All right, you go into the bookstore and you get a book about hair. Okay, everybody, well, not everybody has hair, but most people have hair. And this is the fashion statement of the styles of the hair of October 2020. It may not be the styles in the fashion on December 2020, uh, 2021 that's coming, 2040, the Lord tarries.
I used to read Papa Mechanics or, or Papa Sonic. I forget which one it was. When I was a kid, and we're gonna be flying by by now. We'll be we would be flying around in in little spaceships like the Jetsons. Their prophecy was wrong. It reports God is saying it. It's written by man, but God. I don't believe in God. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Almighty God, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. God, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, said it. Now, because you don't believe it, Almighty God's up in heaven. I, oh, man. I, all my angels over here, we got to have a board meeting. Jesus, come on, bring the cherubim. We've got a lot of people down there that we created. And they just don't believe what we, uh, what I said and all that. And, you know, we got to come up with something better. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Because you think there's no hell. Because you think that, you know, once you die, that's it. You die and there, there's no afterlife. Or whatever fantasies you and religion and education and science can come up with. You have no genuine accuracy of your beliefs and your statements like God has put the genuine accuracy of his statements of his word. There is a hell and you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It's that simple. God said it, that settles it. I know that, I mean, that's, a, that's not a broad statement. But it's an accurate statement. God said, I spoke to one man. I told him to get him and his family, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives. I want you to build an ark. I want you to preach to the people that there's something called rain coming. And I'm going to flood out the whole earth because of the violence and the sin and the wickedness of the earth. And it happened. I don't want everybody to prepare because... Because once the computers flip over to 2000, we're all going to be in chaos and all the power is going to be turned off and then it, nothing happens. I thought it was funny when the Y2K and I was with my wife, Lisa, and we, had a, we both had a computer. And we didn't, whether or not, I mean, we didn't care. And we... One night before we went to bed, we reset the computer. So in five minutes, the computers would switch over to 2000, January 1st, 2000. And we will see what our computer did. It didn't do nothing. Well, the Myrian calendar says there's no accuracy. Well, the, the scientists and the politicians, the media said COVID-19 is going to wipe out the... There's no accuracy. And the murdering hornets. And the asteroid that was going to collide with the Earth. And the Cold War with the nuclear missiles of, of Russia and the United States. We believe the earth is flat. It's not accurate. And though man has said it, if God didn't say it, there's no accuracy. And then we have the accuracy of Jesus, who is God. God manifested in the flesh. God left his throne, was born in Bethlehem in a manger. And the first recorded words were 12 or 13 years old in the temple. I'm about my father's business. And then he shows up 
uh, at the time being uh, being baptized of John the Baptist, and we have the recorded words of Jesus and his trial and his death upon the cross. And then speaking three days and three nights later after <coughs> his death and burial to Mary in the garden, to the men on the road of Amenus, and then to his ascension into heaven in Acts chapter 1. And then speaking to Paul on the road to Damascus. They are all accurate they are all the word of god i don't believe it well there's a place for your unbelief one day it's called the great white throne judgment and that's too late to believe what you didn't believe the bible expresses to you what to do and it is the authority and you are not. Well, I don't want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe I'd be good and I give money to charity. And if I go to church twice a year, that's not what the Bible says. Well, who are you to judge? Judge not, least you be judged. And you stole that out of the Bible. It's amazing the people that are against the Bible come up with the Bible doctrine. Well, you know, Jesus turned the water into wine too, and yeah, that's in the Bible. Well, that's not what Jesus would do. You don't know what he did in the Bible? He'll come up to me all the lot, you know, just because I'm loud. That's not what, you're turning people away. And I say, listen, you have not studied and read your Bible. And even Jesus turned people away. That rich young ruler, Lord Jesus, what shall I do and gain eternal inheritance? Oh yeah, I honored my parents. Yeah, I loved my neighbor. Yeah, I did. I did been doing that from the youth. Well, go sell everything that you have and give to the poor and come follow me. Oh, goodbye. What? Goodbye. You mean to tell me that somebody was driven away from Jesus by the word of Jesus? And they'll come up to, well, you know, you should. yes, I turned people away. So did Jesus. God spoke to Cain. And Cain left God. God didn't drive Cain away. Cain drove himself away. The carnal nature that we have, our depravity. We challenge that. I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. Your boss does. That big, what was it, octagon, red sign that says stop. I forget what the name, the name of that. I think it's octagon. Or whatever, the, whatever the, the, the figure shape of the stop sign. That tells you what to do. All right, you don't, I don't know what the name of the shape. What about that little red circle that, that, that lights up red? That tells you what to do. The manager of the store that you go to says you got to go to aisle five because I mean you got to go to cash register five because three is closed. Oh, I like the number three. Well, stop! I'm not opening three. You got to go to five. And you go in the grocery store. I, I, I gotta have spaghetti. Because spaghetti is, is, is the meal I'm planning for, for people coming over. And you get over to, to the store, and they only got one brand of spaghetti. You got to get that spaghetti because there's no other. You're supposed to do what your mom and dad tells you. No one's going to tell me what to do. Yeah, and you're a nice little rebellion, aren't you? Rebellion. I've got my rights. And the Bible says, thus saith the Lord. That's a pretty bold statement. Thus saith the Lord. 
you have been involved in, you stay at the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. You have been involved in adultery. And the Bible says, thou shalt not commit adultery. You have been charged before God and Jesus Christ stealing your employer's goods at work. And thou shalt not steal. It's what God said. A Christian's going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. They never told anybody about Jesus. Go in all the world and preach to God. Well, I could No, no, no. That's not what you could. That's no excuses. What did the Bible say? What did God say? People at the great white throne judgment. Well, I think Buddha. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I think Allah. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I think Mary, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I think the Pope, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What about what Floyd said? What about believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? Then again, it may also say, which I've already said, thou shalt not. And people don't want to be told and they don't want God to tell them, no, don't do that. Most of the aggravating things of growing up in life with mom or dad said, don't do that. Don't touch that. Don't go there. And when they're not looking, we touch it, we do it. We... God told the most perfect man and woman in all the world, don't eat that fruit. That's all he said. He didn't say commit, don't commit adultery. He didn't say don't tell no lie. He didn't say, you know, he said don't eat that fruit. The Bible is to be accurate. It's too bad. You know, it's so funny. Also, when I grew up, I think the 70s or 80s, they used to call it the accurate weather forecast. Well, today there's going to be chances of rain. Chances of rain, and then it did not rain, is not accuracy. It's not accurate. Well, get your snow shovel ready, because tonight it's going to snow. And then you wake up in the morning, there's no snow. That's not accurate. And a lot of the media today, and past today, a lot of the stories of the media are not accurate. Ask Mr. Dan Rather and CBS with their false reports about President Bush. That was inaccurate. I had one time when I was working for the newspaper, and it was election night, and we waited and waited for the results, and we sent out a, the newspaper. I think it was Bush. I'm trying to remember. But we sent out the headlines. President Bush went to He's the president of the United States. And we've got, most of the trucks went out. My, my truck was one of the first trucks to get out always. And then, you know, on the radio went silent. The two-way radio. You know, we're not leaving, you know, we're leaving the garage, we're going on the road. It just got silent. And I got called on my cell phone and said, Valley, how, how much are you? How much is your route done? I said it's. I got about another hour and I'm done. And I I had to go back to the to the garage and get more another route of newspapers. I had a couple of routes. But, oh, you got so you're almost done. Yeah. Why? What's wrong? It, it ain't nothing you've done. So I get back to to the garage the the loading docks. Come to find out that President Bush was not the president because Florida had a problem with their chads. You remember that? Florida couldn't count the votes so their chads were wrong. And we printed a paper that Bush won. I think it was Bush. Actually, by the end of the night, by the next round of the papers coming off the press, we had to stop the press because Florida had a problem with their voting. That was not, well, it was an error. That's not accurate. There is no error with God. You know, you can get an intersection with a police 
You could be in an accident. Bam! And that police officer goes over, talks to the people of car A, talks to the people of car B, the car behind, the car that was going westbound, hey, the people that are walking on the sidewalk. The cop could get tremendous amount of witnesses and record. And some of them statements are not going to be accurate. That's not accuracy. That's not the Bible. That's not God. The Bible is to be accurate. Don't quote those statics that you read in some other books on this. And this is done constantly. Look, yourself, look it up to yourself. I had a man, he's teaching Sunday school, and he was wrong. And I go up and say, what are you saying? Well, that's what a man, another man taught me. Well, that other man and you are wrong. Here's what the Bible says. Well, you know, they, they, they tied a rope around the, 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 the high priest's leg when he went in for the atonement. In case he died, there's no rope. And I had the guy, I had another guy, he come up me. Well, you see, it, it did say rope. R-O-B-E. And I told the guy, I said, uh, you don't know how to spell. Rope is R-O-P-E. And there are people that will quote other men for their statements against the Bible to try to disprove the accuracy of the Bible when men are not accurate. Listen, <clears throat> I street preach and I teach the Bible. There have been times, many times, that I've misquoted innocently a passage of the Bible. I am inaccurate, not the Bible. And the authority in this book. The word of God and God is who he is. According to this word, then he would not make a mistake. It is impossible to make a mistake of God, not man. So there's a list, list floating around out there. I've heard this list and you can probably Google it. You can Google it. And the list is contradictions in the Bible. You see, if we can find a contradiction of the Bible, then the Bible and God are flawed. That's why those lists are out there. But there are no contradictions in the Bible. Well, what about that one verse there that, or those two verses there you can't explain? One verse out of all the verses and one verse out of that entire list of verses you got that we gave you the correct Bible answer for. So what you see in the fact is When we talk about the reliability of the Bible, there are skeptics out there who will try to disprove the reliability. They will try to make the Bible no accuracy at all. And meanwhile, the person giving you the weather, accurate weather, You brought your raincoat, your rubbers, and the umbrella, and you did not need them. Oh, it's okay. We'll turn the weather on again tonight to see what we, what the weather is. We'll turn the weather again on the morning. We'll turn the weather in on again in the afternoon. We'll turn the weather on. We'll have a whole weather channel that we can just watch the weather. And though he makes a mistake, and though he errs often, 
When we have a complete, reliable, accurate, genuine word of God, no. Yes. When a religion says there is no hell, God said, all is not well, there is a hell, and Jesus who created hell said that hell was made for the devil and his angels told us why hell was made. And there are religions that will come knocking on your door and you'll ask them and they'll say, well, there's no hell. What did Jesus say? We don't care what Jesus said. We don't care what God said. Matter of fact, we've taken the King James Bible, which is the subject of this whole thing, and we have come up with our new and approved word of God. Small G-O-D. Word of the devil. And that's what, we're, that's what this whole study is. And when we get in this whole study, let me run down some of the things that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the revelation. We're going to look at the final authority. And these are all the accuracies of God or the inaccuracies of man. We're going to look at the Bible, the manuscripts, the Word of God, John Wycliffe, Hermasis, William Tyndale, Miles Coverdale, the Taverns Bibles, Greek, Kettle's Greek Dictionary, Greek Translation, the Latin Vulgate, Syriac, Codex, New Testament, Apocrypha, Papyrus, Inspiration of the Bible, the Canon, the Silent Centuries, Church Fathers, Syrian, Syria, the Coptic Version, Apologist, Inerrancy, Manuscript Evidence, Constantine the Great, 2 Timothy 2.15, Texas Receptus, Walt Disney, English Translations, the Ditestron, the Di, the Didac, hopefully I can say it by then, Daniel's Two Legs, the East and the West, the Council of Trent, Satanic Bible Version, Jerome's Latin Vulgate, the Oxford Movement, West Cart and Horn, the American Standard, the Revised Standard, Good News for Modern Man, the Living Bible, the Amer New American Standard, the New International Version, the New King James Bible, Thomas Nelson in the New King James Version, the New Revised Standard, the Occult, Critical Text, Codex Alexandrius, Tshefterov, Tis the French Philosopher and Voltaire, Bible Corrector, Dead Sea Scrolls, the 3rd century, King James 1611 Bible, we're going to look at, in this study, Lord willing, the reliability and the accuracy of God and his Bible, the King James Bible. And some of the men that God will use, yeah, men wrote the Bible, we'll look at that. And then we're going to look at the error and the inaccuracy of man being used by the devil. And we have the reliability, the accuracy of God said, God told us, Jesus said, Thus saith the Lord, and in the human nature of man, I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. And the Bible says to that, Thus saith the Lord, and God said, and Jesus said, and Jesus answered, and God answered, And the main attack of the Bible, and the main attack of modern Bible, is the phrase of man, I don't want anybody to tell me what to do.
And I'm a street preacher. God said it. I don't care what God says. My priest, my rabbi, my pastor, my church, even I, my said. And you even got Christians, saved Christians, that don't even read the Word of God. And we're going to stop right there. And next time, next week, Lord willing, we're going to put up, put up with man and God. We're going to study Revelation. Not the book of Revelation. We're going to look at the Revelation, the Word of God. Not the book of Revelation.